So I want to pause for a moment and actually talk about optimizing our data structures for performance reasons. So what we're going to do in this lesson is jump into our reducers file. And here we're just saying that we simply have an array of pizzas. Now, in a bigger application, this is not going to scale or handle well when we want to do things very fast. So thinking about using objects instead of an array might be a better approach. So in this lesson, what we're going to do, instead of using an array, we're actually going to change our data structure over to what we call an entity. Now, in the server side, you might have entities, and we might look things up by IDs. So in this case, you can think of NGRX store as some kind of database for the client. We can then use the selectors, which we've already created in previous videos, to query that database and compose new objects and return them to our component. So what we want to do now is refactor this over to become an entity. So we're going to create an object which holds our entities, and we're going to store them via an ID, which is going to be of type number. Now, every single entity will hold each particular pizza. So instead of just having one data property, we're going to have entities, which contains all of our pizzas, and each pizza's ID is going to be the key inside the object. So let's move down to our initial state, and we can say entities, and what we'll do is just initialize that with a brand new empty object. So what this means is when we scroll down, we will be greeted with a small TypeScript error. It's just picked up that we're trying to assign an array or assign a property which doesn't exist to our application state. Now, what we need to do is essentially convert an array data structure. So what we've got is something that looks like this. We've got an ID with, for example, one, and we've got another ID with, for example, two. Now, what we're going to do with entities is we're basically going to create something that looks a little bit like this. So we're going to then have the ID of one and the name of the pizza, which will be a string. So we'll just say pizza for now. And then we'll also have that toppings array, which has then come back from the server. What I'll do is just say pizza equals, so we can see this a bit clearly. TypeScript is just moaning that this has an any type. So for now, what we could do is just type this as any so we could see what is actually happening. So we want to essentially take this data structure, which is given to us as we've seen, via the action.payload, and we want to convert it into a simple object lookup. Now, when we do things like subscribe to root params, so for instance, you've probably seen whilst clicking through the application that when you go to a pizza, we actually go to products forward slash the pizza ID. So it could be ID of one, ID of two, or three. So you can see that the key of the object will contain the value of the ID of the object. So what this means is we can actually be very quick. We can say pizza bracket, and that could be ID. So we could say const ID equals one, and we can look up the exact pizza that we need very, very quickly. We don't have to iterate through a gigantic data set every single time. So let's carry on. What we want to do is convert an array into this nice object structure. So for now, what we can do is just remove these. We don't need these anymore. And we're going to change the data over to become pizzas. And then we can remove this data property. We don't need that data property anymore. We're going to then create the entities constant, and then we're going to rebind that constant to our returned state. Now, you could obviously break these types of things into a particular file where you can bring them in and convert a data structure to an entity of your liking. For now, what we're going to do, and through this course, we're going to just code these inside of the reducers themselves. There's nothing stopping you creating a small helper function that you can just import to do this multiple places for multiple objects. So what we're going to say is the const entities equals the pizzas. And because this is an array, you can see that we have these array methods. Now we're actually going to use the reduce method. Now the first argument that we're going to give is in fact the entities, and the second argument will be each particular pizza. So inside the body of the function, what we're then going to do is then return a new data structure each time that this function is called. So the reduce function accepts an initial value, which you can see here. So we're actually going to supply a brand new object as the initial value, 
And what we're going to do is just merge all of the current entities into that object. So we're not leaving anyone behind, we're gonna copy them in, and then this gets passed as the entities through our reduce function. Now we could optionally just quickly type this entities. So we're gonna say that the type is going to be an object, and it's gonna have that ID of type number, and each entity will then be a pizza. So when we go inside of here and save this out, this will become a little bit clearer for us to read. So we should end up with something like this. We're passing in the state.entities, we're copying them across as initial state. And what we now need to do inside of here is say return a new object. Now because we get this entities, we want to spread this every time. So we're gonna merge the entities into the existing state. And all we need to do now is just simply bind each pizza by its key. So we can do square brackets, pizza.id, this is a new ES6 syntax where you can dynamically create the properties from the ID. So this is dynamically going to create one, two, or three as the object's key. And now the value, which is our pizza, which we can also just type as pizza as well, just for clarity. This is then going to hold that pizza. So we end up with the new data structure. And what we'll do is rebind this to our return statement. And then we'll go and check it out in the Redux dev tools. So we can add this to our return state. We can save this out. And hopefully this makes sense what we're doing here. We're taking an array and we're flattening the array into just pure objects so we can look them up really fast. And think about it in future. When we want to remove something from an array, we don't have to iterate it. If we want to update it, we don't have to go and find it. We can just look it up on our data structure and just simply replace it. So it makes these things a little bit easier as well. So we're going to save this out. This will actually break our selectors because underneath here, we do not actually export these get pizzas. So what I'm going to do is change this over to get pizza entities, and then we're going to return the entities property. And what I'll do is add this above just for consistency. So now that we've renamed this, we'll actually see that in our selectors file that we actually have a bug at the moment. So we've got get pizzas, but what we need is get pizzas entities. So what I'm gonna do is change that over. Now to prevent this actually erroring because the ng4 in our template is actually expecting an array. Now we are just giving it an object at this point in time. So what I'm gonna do is save that. You can see that this is just reformatted. And we'll go into this products and just comment out the pizzas observable. So this will allow us to see our data structure in the Redux dev tools. So we'll save this. Go back to the browser and we'll come back and we'll fix things up. So back in the browser, we've commented this out. We have no pizzas, add one to get started. However, what we're interested in is our dev tools. Now we haven't installed this yet. I've installed it, but you haven't installed it just yet. So what you can do to install the Redux dev tools, go across to extension.remotedev.io. Now you need Chrome or you need Firefox to install this. That's the current support for this extension. I'd highly recommend using it. You can see every single action, every single step, all the state changes are represented in this DevTools. So go ahead and install it. This should work right away because we've already got that module installed to allow us to use the store DevTools. So go ahead, install it, and then we'll come back to here. Click on the Redux panel. Now typically this will not load up the first time. So what you have to do is just give it a refresh so it can pick up your application. So we can see a few interesting things here. We can see that we got this load pizzas, the load pizza success, and then we can actually look through the different states. So we can see the actions, the states. So let's start with the load pizzas. And this will kind of give you a nice walkthrough to the dev tools. So here we can see the tree. What I like to look at is the raw because it gives you kind of a, a nice diff of what's actually changed at that point in time. So in our products, we then have the pizzas and we're changing that loading from false to true. We can also do things like have a look at the action. This is the action that has been dispatched at this point in time. We do not have a payload because we're just instructing that we want to load. Now, if we actually look at the pizza success, we can see something different. So we have this payload and then further down, we'll have that type load pizza success. And you can see that this payload is an array which contains all of our pizzas now the interesting part is when we actually go back and look at the state. And we can just have a look inside of here. 
So we've got our products, we've got our pizzas. Now what we just changed from the data, which was an array, is now a completely flattened object. So you can see here that we have a key of one, and we have the name of the pizza, the topping. So we're looking for an ID of one for this particular pizza. This pizza has an ID of two. Further down under the toppings, we can see two. And similarly, with the last pizza, we have that ID of three. And then we also have the loaded state changes. So this is really, really nice. You can have a click around and familiarize yourself with what's going on here. When we click on chart, this gives us a really nice view and a representation of each individual item in our store. So here we can see we have the pizzas, then we have the entities, and these then branch out to different entities. And you can see all the information associated with them. So let's go back and create one more selector, which will finish off this video so we can actually see the pizzas that have been rendered. So let's go ahead. What we can do for now is actually uncomment this, even though it will throw an error, and we'll just switch to our index.ts, which is inside the reduces folder. So at the moment, we're saying, give me all the pizzas, and we're passing in our pizza state, which returns us the state.pizzas. So we just saw this when we printed this out in the Redux dev tools. But now what we're doing is actually passing the entities as the second argument to this selector which means that we need to create another selector to allow us to actually get all of these pizzas as an array value. We want them as an array, we don't want them as objects. So what we can do instead, instead of creating this as get all pizzas, we can rename this to get pizzas entities. So we're using the same function names as before, but we're just exporting them one level up. We're not clashing with names or anything like this. We actually want to create the ability for us to select all of the pizzas as an array. So what we can say is export const get all pizzas. So what we're actually doing is replacing the selector with a new one. Now we can say create selector, and we want to pass the get pizza entities as the first value. So what we can say is get pizza entities. Now because this is a selector, we can also use it as a function like we're doing here. So we don't have to use these functions that are exported from different levels. We can use the selectors to compose brand new state. So what we actually get here is a function and we get given the entities because that is what we're passing through here. The selector will then get called to the next one, which will give us those entities. So what we actually want to do inside of this function is return. Now the way that we can convert this object data structure into an array is actually quite simple. So we can say object.keys and then entities. So what this will essentially do is give us an array of one, two, and three, because those are the IDs that correspond to the pizzas. And we can simply just say map. Now, because we are using IDs, each one of them will be a number. Now, the object.keys actually returns us a string. So you can see here that it says string array, although ours are made up of numbers. So we need to just simply convert this string into a number momentarily. Now, because we're mapping over just the entities of the object, we actually want to return each entity, square bracket, and we can look that entity up by its ID. So all we're simply doing is something that looks like this, and then we're then mapping over it and returning the actual entity that corresponds with each ID. Now, you can see that we have this red underline, because at this point, object.keys returns a string. So what we can say is parse integer, and we're just gonna use a base 10 as the value. So this is what we should end up with. We should have get all pizzas, get pizza entities. We get the entities as the first argument. We're returning the object.keys, which then gives us every single key as a string. We're then looping over those. We get each ID, and we're using that entities, which is above, to then look each item up by its ID, and we're just simply just passing that string in but converting it to a number. Now it depends how you're structuring things in your database. You may use a completely different string or a number approach. You may use a string with a unique hash, for example, which in this case you wouldn't need to actually convert this back to a number. So that's pretty much it. At this point we will have 
an array of our entities, which is pretty much what we started with before we refactored our reducer. So we can save this and we can go into the products component. This is all looking good now, so there's no red underline, so we can safely save that out. And we'll go back to the browser and check out this finished piece. So back in the browser, we're pretty much back to where we were in the previous video, where we're displaying all of our pizzas. However, these are displayed slightly differently. We're composing them in the reducer as entities, and then with a selector, we're converting those entities into just a nice array so that we can then feed this into our ng4. ng4 can then iterate over it nicely. Now, it might be in multiple places that we want to use the pizzas as an array, so this makes perfect sense to create a selector. And the beauty with the selectors is they are reusable functions, so we can use them in multiple places, and we can also use selectors with other selectors. So once we actually click through, and in the next couple of chapters, we're going to be creating some more advanced selectors which tie in things like the root estate, how we actually load the toppings and display these toppings. But for now, what we've done, and we can take a look in the Redux DevTools again, we'll give this a quick refresh. We can see that we have these entities and we are simply using the selector to then map that across and then return us a brand new array.